Hi, today from Skilled Wound Care, we will be discussing wound care in the nursing facility, focusing on a wet to dry dressings. We will be demonstrating a wet to dry dressings, and one of the most controversial uses of wet to dry dressings is in the nursing facility because it is not recommended for prolonged use in the FTAG 314. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate a wet to dry dressing. So we always use normal saline. This is 0.9% normal saline. And um, one of the things you always wanna do before you apply your dressings is to irrigate um, the wound itself. And usually you could use that with a saline bullet or with a syringe and really um, with a little bit of pressure um, irrigate that wound. But for now and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and you can do the wet to dry in a number of ways. You can actually pour the saline um, into a cup, which I'm going to do here for this demonstration, or you can actually go over a sink and just pour the normal saline um, onto the gauze itself. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take a piece of the gauze and just wet it here. And you can take, and then what, after you do that, you want to go ahead and and squeeze it and, and let a lot of the let it a lot of that loose water out of there. And you got to make sure you use the loose gauze. Um, the woven gauze that's loosely woven. Then you'll go, go ahead and open it up so you get those fibers of the tissue and then you'll just lay it on there and you'll continue to do that with your, with your wet gauze, packing the wound as such and that's your wet layer. So you'll have all this wet gauze there inside of the wound. You may even want to put some on this necrotic area here. That's your wet layer and then you'll move on to your dry layer and you'll use the same 4x4 four four dressings except they're dry and then you may want to lay them out to be in contact with the wet and you'll keep going until you have enough and then once you're done with that you'll put um, either an island dressing or I have an ABD pad you'll put that over there and then you'll um, use some skin tape to go ahead and tape that down island dressings are preferable and that will basically be your wet to dry dressing. Now what will happen is that these dressings need to be changed within 8 to 12 hours. In the nursing home sweating, we usually only do dressings once a day. So make sure if you do these dressings, you're at least doing them twice a day, morning and evening. And when you're removing them, the reason why these are not indicated in the nursing facilities, specifically from the FTAC 314, is that they're painful to remove. They, When you do remove them, the whole purpose is to remove the dead tissue from the wound, so they're performing mechanical debridement, but they also remove healthy tissue, so it's a non-selective debridement, and so you're removing granulating tissue, which can cause bleeding and breakdown of the granulation tissue. So these cause pain, they cause breakdown in the tissue, and there's other dressings that are better than these dressings for uh, wound healing. Although studies have really not shown that other dressings will heal wounds faster than wet to dry dressings, commonly we don't use them for this purpose. So if you're gonna go ahead and remove them, the top layer won't be hard to remove, but probably after eight to 12 hours, this dressing here that's wet right now, if this had transpired for eight to 12 hours on a real wound, it would probably be dry. And then once you start removing it, it will probably be pretty hardly stuck to the surface to the basin of the wound and as you're removing it you're probably going to rip off some of this tissue here and it's going to be painful to the patient so you may want to uh, wet it a little bit to remove it but that does remove the purpose of the actual pulling it off to mechanically uh, non-selective really debride some of the tissue on there and so that will be painful so you may want to medicate your patient when you're changing the dressing a lot of patients have pain with these kinds of dressings, especially if the wounds are this large. And so you may want to medicate them and you want to use this in, in limited use. And um, now today we have other dressings that are a little bit more advanced than wet to dry dressings that we may want to use such as hydrogels or collagenases or calcium alginates, foam dressings. There's just a lot of different dressings that you can use that have autolytic activities such as even honey dressings have autolytic activity that may be superior to using wet to dry dressings because wet to dry dressings are non-selective so you'll have the granulation tissue being eaten up by them as well when you pull them off they cause pain so they're not our number one treatment option in the nursing facility wound care setting more of this training is available at our um, 
wound certification course. I hope you join us there and we can talk a little bit more about why uh, we don't use this dressing too often and why we like to use other dressings. Um, but that, that ends this demonstration on what to dry. Thank you for watching this video from Skilled Wound Care. We are a physician's group servicing nursing facilities throughout the nation. Please click on the link below or give us a call to start services in your building for nursing facility wound care at your nursing home.